Wake up. It's Brian and Tracy. As we get ready for the 17th annual Radio Mash that begins this Wednesday at the HEB parking lot in Huntsville. And uh, we're asking you to bring non-perishable food items like rice and beans and canned vegetables and fruits, uh, things of that sort. Boxed foods, cereals are good, Mm -hmm. uh, canned juices, all of those types of things. And we're going to take that food and put it into our Wiesner of Huntsville mess tent at Radio Mash. And then um, the good folks at the Good Shepherd Mission are going to make sure all of that food is distributed to families who need it most here at Christmas time. Uh, but we are looking forward to seeing you and your donations walk into those tents beginning on Wednesday. We're going to be out there at 11 o'clock Wednesday morning beginning our live broadcast. Tracy, it'll be your first time out there. I'm excited. We're going to have Bill Vic Ford out there, too. Yep. The Army National Guard is going to set up our home away from home there in the HEB parking lot. So uh, you won't be able to miss us as you're driving down 11th Street. You'll look over and see the mash tent set up again and the giant inflatable Santa Claus and <laughs> uh, and the snowman. I, I think we're going to break the snowman out again this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so we want you to be a part of it, of course. This is the annual toy and food drive that we've done. This is our 17th year to do it. And a big thank you to Bill Fick Ford uh, for partnering with us again this year. And, of course, uh, the good folks over at HGB as we get ready for MASH. We have details on uh, ways that you can participate on our webpage at ksam1017.com. 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. Good afternoon. No, no, it's not the afternoon yet, Carlos. We're almost there. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Got your weather forecast coming right up. Also got a Christmas song from Garth Brooks around the corner, too. Well, as we all know, your glove box is the place for all those extra napkins that you collect. But the folks at Chipotle want to change that. They just added some new merch to their website, including a napkin holder that attaches to your visor. They call it the Chipotle car napkin holder. Supposed to be a playful jab at all the people that take way too many napkins when they order their food. The idea is it declutters your glove box and offers easy access when eating behind the wheel. Each napkin holder costs 30 bucks, but get ready to be disappointed. They did sold out. They did sell out over the weekend. It's not clear if they plan to stock more, but the good news is you don't need to wait. All they did was slap their logo on a tissue holder for visors and called it a napkin holder. So do with that with what you will. As the Kentucky Headhunters walk softly on this heart of mine, part of 90s at noon on 101.7 KSAM. Carlos here on the Midday Show, your Southeast Texas where the forecast is coming right up. And it's time for a food story. Well, if you're hitting up a holiday potluck this month, here are some dishes that you need to steer clear of. Hmm. Stay clear of the baked potatoes and aluminum foil. Because when those potatoes cool down, the moisture and steam in the foil can create a perfect environment for the bacteria to grow. You can use foil to bake the potatoes. Just remove it before it cools down. Mayo-based salads. That means potato salad, egg salad, and macaroni salad. It's not always the mayo itself. The protein or the cooked carbohydrate can make you sick too, so always keep those salads cold. Fish and seafood, not only can they spoil easily at room temperature, it's also a risk for people with allergies. Do love me some fish, though. And, of course, nuts. It's another one that's bad for people with allergies. If a dish calls for sprinkling almonds or peanuts to finish a dish, consider leaving them off or bring them in a separate container. Just be smart this Christmas. Please, no hospital trips. George Burge, mind on you on KSAM. Good afternoon. I'm Big Glenn Edwards. Your forecast coming up uh, in just a few moments. Also, by the way, this Monday morning, KSAM Wake Up Morning Show with Brian and Tracy going to debut a new song from Gabby Barrett at 6.30 Monday morning. New Music Mondays here on KSAM. So uh, let's talk about Christmas trees here real quick, okay? So if you put up an artificial Christmas tree, you can pretty much have that thing up for months and months and months. And some people actually do. Uh, But if you're putting up a real tree, there's an art, believe it or not, to the timing. Now, according to a new survey, real Christmas tree shoppers fall into some categories based on when they're going to buy their tree. So here's the breakdown. The early birds who put their tree up before Thanksgiving, 14% of people that surveyed said they do that. Uh, Also, people who buy their tree over Black Friday. Well, I tell you what, uh, 33% of people say they do that, so that's a third. Also, the seasonal purists who get the tree the first weekend of December, the other third of people do that. Basically, two out of three get a real Christmas tree for about a month out. Uh, Then, of course, people that wait until December 16th. By the way, that would be this coming uh, weekend for all intents and purposes, right? Uh, Or is that next week? Let's see. Today is the 9th. Uh, I guess you could say that, but uh, really, second week, December 16th is uh, next weekend. 
Uh, matter of fact, it's a week from today, all right? And uh, people who also put it off until the third week of December, 3% of people say that. Then you've got the traditionalists that put their Christmas tree up on Christmas Eve. So then the question becomes, um, have you gotten yours up? Your country home for the holidays, 101.7 K. Sam Blake Shelton with his rendition of Jingle Bell Rock. All right, folks. A lot of people, especially younger adults, use vacation time during the holidays to go home for the holidays, whether they're flying, road tripping, whatever. But does that count as a true vacation? I mean, for me, I don't know that I would consider it much of a vacation. It's just you're getting away for a little bit, right? But I'm not the only one. Apparently, 34% of people say traveling home does not, in fact, count as a vacation. In fact, they say 71% are probably going to need a vacation after all the family time. <laughs> Most people stay with family or friends when they go back home, but 34% of people say they're planning to stay somewhere else, like a hotel, bed and breakfast, hostel, Airbnb, whatever. Maybe staying in a new place is a hack that can make it feel more like a vacation. Some reasons people pick a hotel include more space for themselves, they can relax and quote-unquote be taken care of. They can get to quiet time and there are more amenities than they'd otherwise have if they were staying with the family for the holidays. I can see that. That's, that's reasonable. I get it. But yeah, I still don't think it's a vacation going home for the holidays. Just getting away for a little bit. Why not?